Strange and Interesting World The Exorcisms of Latoya Ammons November 2011 Latoya Ammon, her mother Campbell, and Latoya's three young children move into a rental house on Carolina Street in Gary, Indiana, a small, quiet lane of one-story homes. Everything for the family was normal and quiet until December arrived, when despite the winter chill, large black flies began to swarm their screened-in porch. As if flies were an omen of things to come, other strange things began happening as well. Sometimes after midnight, Ammon said they would hear footsteps climbing the basement stairs and the creak of the door opening into their kitchen. No one was there. Then on March the 10th, 2012, the family's unease turned to fear. Around 2 a.m., Ammons and her family would have been asleep but were mourning the death of a loved one with a group of friends. Ammons, who was in her mother's room, yelled, Mama, Mama. Her mother ran into the room to see her 12-year-old granddaughter, unconscious, levitating above the bed. Ammons and several others surrounded the girl praying. She remembers being terrified. She remembers thinking, What's going on? Why is this happening? Campbell said eventually her granddaughter descended onto the bed and woke up with no memory of what had happened. Campbell and Emmons said the people who were visiting that night refused to ever return. Campbell told her daughter, we need to get help. We need to talk to someone who knows how to deal with it. They didn't know exactly what it was, but they believed it was something supernatural. They called local churches, but most refused to listen. Eventually, one church listened and visited the house. They were told they had spirits in the house and needed to cleanse it with ammonia and bleach and draw crosses on every door and window. Ammons did as she was asked. They also suggested she pour olive oil on her children's hands and feet and smear oil in the shape of crosses on their foreheads. She did this as well. She also reached out to two clairvoyants. They told her she had over 200 demons besieging her home. She believed them because demons were a part of her Christian faith. They told her the best thing she could do is move, but she did not have the money to move. Instead, Ammons took the advice of one of the clairvoyants and prepared an altar in the basement covered in a white sheet, a white candle, and a statue of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus on it. She also opened a Bible to Psalm 91. She donned a white t-shirt and white scarf, and with a friend of hers, they burned sage and sulfur all throughout the house. The smoke was so thick they could hardly breathe. Ammons drew crosses with the smoke as her friend read Psalm 91 aloud. Ammons said for three days things were fine, then they got much, much worse. The family said demons possessed Ammons and her children, then ages 7, 9, and 12. Their eyes bulged, evil smiles crossed their faces, and their voices deepened every time it happened. The seven-year-old boy sat talking in a closet to a little boy no one else could see. The little boy was describing to him what it felt like to be killed. Twelve-year-old would later tell mental health professionals that she sometimes felt as if she were being choked and held down so she couldn't move or speak. She says she heard a voice say she'd never see her family again and wouldn't live another 20 minutes. Finally, in desperation, they went to their family physician, 
In his medical notes, their doctor wrote, Delusions of ghost in home, and hallucinations. What happened next was detailed in a DCS report of a case manager's interview with staff. Ammon's sons cursed the doctor in demonic voices, raging at him. Medical staff said the youngest boy was lifted and thrown into the wall, with nobody touching him. The boys passed out and would not come to. Someone from the doctor's office called 911. Eight police showed up with multiple ambulances. The boys woke up at the hospital. The older one, then nine, acted rationally, but the youngest screamed and thrashed. It took five men to hold him down. Thank you for watching Strange and Interesting Worlds, The Exorcisms of Latoya Ammons Part 1. What do you think? Did this really happen, or was something else going on? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and click subscribe for more from Strange and Interesting Worlds.